Hi, everyone. Thank you again for being with me today at home. Today, I am with one of my favorite people in the fashion industry. He is a friend. He is a designer that I admire tremendously. For many years, I called him my TV husband. But in reality, he is an icon. He is a designer that has really shaped American style. And he has an incredible mix. He's mastered, actually, the mix of Lux and sportswear. He is incredibly generous and a wonderful friend. Please help me welcome my dear friend, Michael Kors. Michael. Hey. hey. <laughs> I, I, love, I love that, you know, during this moment, we both know aviator glasses. Oh. It's our friend. It makes, it's, but you know what? I have to go up. I need mine tinted. That's the biggest secret. The tinted. <laughs> Tint with a prescription. That's the secret. Yes, I need. That's my next move. The tinted. Exactly. Exactly. Mike, how are you? I know you are in New York. <laughs> yes, we stayed in New York City. Uh, we're in Greenwich Village. You know, I think there are, you know, ebbs and flows. We're all experiencing this sort of, you know, roller coaster of emotions. Um, but, you know, I, I, I'm a born and bred New Yorker. For me to be here, um, and, and I don't know, even though things are so dreadful here in New York City, I, I, I don't know. I'm getting strength from it, quite frankly. We're, we're holding up, Nina. It's, it's, it's such an adjustment. I mean, I think that's the huge thing. How many days have you already been quarantined? Oh, my gosh. Uh, I don't even count the days. Since uh, March 14th. Oh, my God. A lot. I mean, it's a that, long for somebody that is as social as you, because you really love people. Oh. And you love you love people. You are you love people. You got you love going out to Broadway. You I love, love traveling. I love traveling. Yes. I mean, yes. Nina, this is just it's unprecedented. I have to think to myself, one of the things that's so strange, April normally for us, for the month of the end of March actually, and April and the beginning of May, we're never home. I, I have never been in New York City for the month of April, because we're always in Europe traveling, working on the collection. We're, we're buying textiles, we're developing things. And it's kind of, I'm a tourist in my own city, which is kind of amazing, but you know, no theater. Now we, we appreciate every little thing in our lives. So when I think about the theater, which is such a, such a huge love for, for me and my husband, that suddenly, you know, Stephen Sondheim turns nine or 90, and they had this incredible birthday celebration and fundraiser with every talent on Broadway performing Sondheim. So they raised money. I got to see all of these entertainers who not only are we fans, but we're friends with a lot of them. On Zoom. And yeah, it was on Zoom, on but Zoom. then you can watch it on YouTube. Oh, fantastic. It's amazing. You get to see Meryl Streep singing Here's to the Ladies. Oh, my God. Fantastic. I mean, what could be better? <laughs> Michael, so what are you, what's keeping you entertained? I know that you've been going through your albums and your photo albums, and in a way, that's a way traveling through time and seeing, you know, I know you've unearthed a lot of pictures Oh, my God, Nina, I'm finding so many pictures. <laughs> but also, you know, right now, for me, a lot of people think we're all floaty and, like, living in the clouds, but I'm used to living by a calendar. And so I are know. you. You're so, and you, you're so organized. Well, What so, have you there, learned? Now I I'm, I'm know. Learned, you've got to let go. You've got to be more flexible. Yeah. Normally, we'd be in Italy on vacation this month. So instead, I'm looking at my Capri pictures. And I have to think about that we will get back. We will be there again. Might not be the same, but we'll be back. You know, Nina, this has made all of us really, I think, more appreciative of everything from the people in our lives to the people who make New York run, who make this country run. You know, when I go out now on a walk, I can walk into... Uh, a store that sells chocolate, lilac chocolates. Right, and you're so and excited. I am so excited <laughs> to buy chocolate-covered almonds. Yes. Yes. And, and honestly, and when I think to myself, 
we need that joy in our lives. Yes, and we need to support the, those local businesses. I know that you've been doing a lot of cooking, but I also yeah. know that you probably take out. And that is a way to also support the local restaurants that are living on takeout. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, I think all of the smaller businesses are feeling such pain from this uh, pandemic that anything we can do, if there's a, a restaurant or a shop or anything, you know, I know it sounds crazy. No, I mean, I've true. ordered, Nina also, we have ordered so many different masks we have like an enormous, enormous wardrobe of masks. Uh, so do I. So do I. <laughs> but I'm trying. Also. And I am, and, and I also try to order out. I want to, you know, I, I want to support those local restaurants. Right now, they're not open. Exactly. And I'm not the best cook. I could cook some it, things. I, I'm okay, but it's limited. It's, it's limited. limited. What? Yes, it's a limited menu. So I've been, I've been trying to do a lot of that. Michael, you have been such a generous supporter of God's love we deliver for over twenty-five years. And for those of you who don't know, God's love we deliver is a nonprofit organization that helps get meals to people that are ill. Right. Tell me a little bit about how that is now more important. Oh my gosh, ever. it's insanity when you when you when you think about right now uh, here in in New York on just on the local level, uh, an organization like God's Love We Deliver, which started back in the '80s dealing with people who had HIV and AIDS, then it it, it expanded and brought women in who had breast cancer, people who had all different illnesses who could not cook. Well, during the pandemic, it is just, it's exploded. Problem is uh, also getting people volunteering in the kitchen. Right now, the volunteering is difficult to find people who want to come in. We're doing everything we can do to support them. Um, I, have, I have people who work for me who are in that kitchen every day volunteering. And then we're also trying to make sure that they're financially stable because so many people depend on them. And then when we think about globally, the, the hunger issue, the World Food Program is inundated now everywhere in the world yeah. uh, with people who are in, in terrible, dire need of yes. nutrition. So yeah. I, even if you can donate $5, $5 to the World we'll Food Program. We'll make a huge, yes. It, well, $5 yes. is a whole day's meals in places like Nicaragua, places like Cambodia, that's a whole day's meal. From being from South America, the Venezuela, Colombia, perhaps the rates of COVID are not as high as ours, but the struggle is the hunger. Like you of said, course. the of food course. is not getting to them. There's no food. There's no yeah, food. There's no so, food. There's so no food. Something, the silver lining, you know, Nina, I, I try to be optimistic. It's my personality. I so, know you are. So is the silver lining out of all of this we have to remember how interconnected we all are. You know, all of the people who are woven into our lives that we don't think about because we're so busy. Every day we're all rushing and we're busy. I've learned, you know, for me, it's a big deal that I've learned to actually breathe, kind of calm it down a bit. Right. Which that's a, that's a big deal. Michael, but you have lived through, and so have I, I mean, we have through the, September 11th, through the financial crisis, you have also had a business for a very long time that has had dips and highs and, and has been a roller coaster. Right. And, but you have always actually been a beacon of optimism. Always, Michael, of course, right. since I've oh. known you. Right. How, do you. How do you do it? What have you learned from the lows? Well, I think the, there's so many things when I think about, you know, the AIDS crisis, the financial sure. collapse in the late 80s, uh, then another financial collapse in 08, business ups and downs, uh, you know, personal things. We all have things that happen, 9-11. I think the simple truth for me, number one, I still have faith in people. I have faith in humanity. I have faith that people will come to their senses always be empathetic about other people, and make the right decisions. The real reality is it's, it's the force of nature, Nina. You know, what goes up comes down and vice versa. 
So you've got to jump on that roller coaster in Coney Island, grab on. You might scream because the ride is, you know, insane, but you've just got to kind of hold on and you're going to get through the ride. All How right. do you communicate with your team? Zoom, obviously. Uh, Zoom, uh, we're looking at PDX and talking, uh, just talking uh, as a group conversation. I have a woman who works for me who has sample prototypes at her house in New Jersey and she is trying them on. Her husband no, takes no, pictures. No. <laughs> and then she sends me the picture and she's like, I'm not a model. I'm like, okay. It's Could okay. We, and also, you know what? I think we're all learning to get more creative. We, we have to be more creative. And you know what? We can't dwell on the fact of this is how I always did it. The simple truth is, I mean, I remember when I made fun of you with your Blackberry, when people were still using Blackberries. <laughs> so true. Well, that was a revolution. We didn't know that we'd be so connected. So, of course, thank God for the fact that we have all of this technology. If we have to work differently, which, you know, we make our uh, runway collection in Italy, where, of course, they've been devastated. Our factories are right in the center of the epicenter in Italy. Fortunately, everyone is fine, but they're just reopening now. It's definitely flexibility is key. Right. And patience. You've got to be patient oh. and you got to be nimble. Are you designing a resort now? You're uh, done with spring. No. Oh. Okay. Normally, I would be done with spring. I'd be in Italy right now and I'd be fitting spring. What we are doing is we're realigning the fashion calendar, which I think is long overdue. I agree completely. Completely. I mean, Can we please go into a normal shopping season and find coats when they, we need coats? Exactly. You know, if you want to buy a pair of white linen trousers, you don't want to buy them in December in a snowstorm. So, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. So we are uh, shifting our deliveries. We are going to be skipping the concept of a freestanding resort season. We will start to ship some great things that I think people can put on right away from spring, uh, from the spring collection, but that will come in probably in January. Um, and most of that will be all seasonless. And there'll be still some pieces if you are living in a warm weather place. But the idea we've inundated everyone with too much. It's so much. Too much, too much. Yeah. So... It's time to see coats and sweaters in November. It's time to see a sundress in May. Um, so we're calming that all down. Right now it's sketched. We're starting to look at prototypes. Um, and you know, Italy uh, is just reopening. And I, I think moving forward will also be more about quality over quantity, I hope, for oh, the shopping. But you know that, I mean, I know that's how you've always shopped. Yeah. And that's how I've always designed. Yes, that's true. You know, so I think that, funny enough, being in our homes right now, I think we've all gotten more appreciative of the things that we kind of rely on. They're like, like, why do you keep putting on that sweater? Because that's the one that makes you feel great. Right. You know, out of a whole closet full of jeans, why are those the jeans that I always wear when I go to take my walk. Mm -hmm. so Not I only that, and when you look at your, your wardrobe, when I think about what I love about my, what, my, my Michael Kors wardrobe is that I have pieces from you that go back 20 years. I have skirts from I don't know how many seasons, and I wear them, and they still feel great. It's that yeah. timelessness that I, you can build upon that wardrobe. That that's, makes that's, sense. that's becoming the listen, you know, the sustainability conversation is it, it's got so many different angles. And one of the things, though, that I've always said, why do you want something that you wear twice? Yeah. That's First that's, off, I've never understood that. The logic. And no. I look, you know, you are destroying the planet also when you buy something and you say, oh, it's inexpensive. I only wore it twice. What's the big deal? You know what? Buy less. Buy better quality. Make sure it's something that you really yes. feel wonderful in. 
And then you're going to have a closet of things you grab for. I mean, that's how I absolutely I've always thought. yes. Always thought. What do you think will happen for Fashion Week? What does that look like? Well, I mean, here's the thing. You know, right now, of course, every day everything's so up in the air. Nina, are we going to be comfortable? And should we feel comfortable having to travel and be en masse for four no. weeks solid? I don't believe so. I think that right now we also, we want to, if we can, whenever we can, we want to be home so that we are able to work with our teams at home um, mm -hmm. and our businesses are flourishing and, and we're giving them attention. But also we want to, we've spent time with our friends and family that we don't want to give that up. So I think we're going to see shorter fashion weeks, less traveling from city to city, more localized. But then I think we all have to be creative if we're not able to travel. How are we going to see all the wonderful product that designers design and make? Right. So we're still, we're still sorting through it. Um, I know that we'll have a spring collection in September, even if I fit it, you know, with my assistants trying it on. I think it will still be wonderful. <laughs> and the reality is real women have to wear the clothes. It should of not course. be. Of course. And, and you're, yes. And you are one of the designers that always designs for that real woman with always. a different body always. type. Always, always. always. So, you know, Michael, I, I think it'll all be up in the air. And I think it'll be interesting to see different people are going to do it different ways. But do I think that we're all going to spend a month sitting in rooms with 2,000 people? No. I, I think it's finished. And New York Fashion Week will not look anything like a, what it looked like before. I really I, do believe you know that. Once again, fashion at, 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 its, right. at its core, core. is about change. It's about change, Nina. That is true. That's so, true. What, what advice, there's many designers out there that are going to be struggling, especially the young up and coming designers that are going to be struggling, maybe not having enough money to show or if to show at all. What advice would you give to those designers that are scared about the situation moving forward? I have to go back to when I started. I did not have a fashion show for three years. I waited. And that was okay. And it was yes. fine. It yes. was fine. Well, of course, now because of social media, you don't have to worry that you're not having a traditional show, number one. Number two, I think this is a time for everyone to focus. So don't try to be everything to everyone. What do you love designing? And if you know your customer, which you have to know them, what resonates with them? So don't try to make everything from evening gowns to t-shirts right. to tailored suits. Focus the whole thing up, know your customer. And, and also, I think don't look over your shoulder to see how other people are doing it. Do what's right for you and right for your customer and you'll go over the bump. You'll go over the hill. That's, that's, that's how I did it. That's how I did it. Do you think there's a role for fashion still? I think we have to remember <laughs> Nina, even if we're sitting at home for so many hours in the day, I still go back to this idea that somehow, even if we're in sweats, why are those sweatpants better than those sweatpants? But also, I have to tell you, I haven't worn heels in like a, I don't know, a long time. I kind of miss it. <laughs> You're going to miss it, exactly. I kind, of, I, I kind of miss getting dressed up a little bit. Of course. Nina, so, when I have a meeting, I still put on a jacket. I, I love that. I put a jacket on because you know what? It makes me feel good. Yeah. And I think that that is never going to go away. I think the reality is, you know what? When we come out of this, Nina, I think we're going to be smarter. We're going to be more empathetic. And the simple truth is, no, maybe we're not going to buy shoes that we wear once. But you, are you going to want to put on a fabulous high heel? Absolutely. Yes. Michael, speaking of soup, any advice for the women out there that what, what should we wear for a Zoom meeting? I have this, I have a strange thing, Nina. I, I, 
I always laughingly, I remember like when I first started, People like Bill Blass, he would always talk about tabletop dressing. And I was like, what is that? <laughs> yes, it's so true. <laughs> That's what they all spoke about. And I'm like, I, I was 22 years old. What's tabletop dressing? <laughs> and, and the reality is, so good. from the waist up. Is all that matters. That's really what matters. <laughs> so you know what? Wear, wear something that either the color is great on you the neckline is great on you. I think cool glasses are fantastic on Zoom. I feel a certain way when I wear something tailored. So, you know, I could be wearing track pants, but when I put on the tailored jacket, it gives you. Yes. So I think it's, it's and then, you know, when you design for, for actresses for an award ceremony, there's really, some actresses think only about the carpet. The smart ones, they always, if they're nominated, they're like, how is it going to look when I win and I'm holding it? Yes, from here, right? It, it's this, it's this. So I think that's a key thing when you're thinking about Zoom. Or you know what? We've been having dinner parties with friends on FaceTime. On Zoom? Yeah, FaceTime. FaceTime is great. And I have to say, you know what? Think about your room. Look at your flowers. They're gorgeous. I mean, so it's, it's, it's the way stuff. That's what it's about. Anything that you've been watching to recommend? Oh, gosh. What haven't we been watching? I love Kate Blanchett in Mrs. America. Amazing. Spectacular. And, and, and just, and, and see, I mean, I've known Gloria Steinem my whole career. Seeing the whole story come to life, incredible. Uh, we loved Unorthodox. I thought it was fantastic. Fantastic. Amazing. How obsessed am I with that actress? Oh, I She's, love, I, I I love, love her. her. I love the whole show. Um, I loved watching Kerry Washington and Reese Witherspoon, Little Fires Everywhere. Incredible. Uh, Al Pacino. What did you think of, what about, did you watch Tiger? Yeah. Like, okay. Uh, <laughs> what is the obsession? Please explain. Well, isn't that a strange thing? That when I first turned it on, I thought, what is this? Why am I watching this? Right. But then you feel sort of, I've got to see how this thing pans out because it became this kind of group conversation. I'm noticing now, I'm sure you are too, that everyone we know, all of our friends, they're sending tips on things. Like, oh, check out this guy, Randy Rainbow on YouTube. Well, he's great. So then we pass it on and we pass it on. Tiger King was one of those things that I, you're like- I wonder, I wonder if we're going to have a whole season of leopard print and tiger print. <laughs> well, you know, of course, Nina. I There's always, some designers. I always like some leopard. I'm always happy with some leopard. Camouflage for camouflage oh. and leopard, no matter what. Yes, yes. No matter what. Yeah. I am there with you, too. I am yeah, there absolutely. with you, too. You have so many women that are your muses. Anyone in particular that you are obsessing with now? You have so many, and, and, and so many of your muses have been, are American, American oh, yeah. women. Absolutely. Well, the funny who are you? Thing, who do I think about? You know, right now in this situation, I've always been kind of amazed, and I'm not just blowing smoke at you. I'm amazed at women who are jugglers, who manage to do so many things and do it with aplomb, to raise children, to have a career, to run a house, to love fashion, mm -hmm. all of those things. So the women who I am turned on by right now, my gosh, you have to be a teacher at home. So I think about people like Gwyneth Paltrow and Blake Lively, Kerry Washington, uh, Olivia Wilde, all of these talented, smart women, and you, who you're a teacher now, you're a business yes. person, you're a cook. You're you're yeah, how you're doing everything. You're it's doing a lot. Everything. Yeah, and yeah. you love but, fashion. Yeah. So right now, I think thinking about uh, the multitasking juggler more than ever. What we design, man, it has to whistle Dixie. It has to. <laughs> it. You know what I mean? When you put it on, it's got to make you feel great, and it's got to be something that you know is going to yeah. last for twenty years. Why not? It should. It should. So, I mean, that's who I've been thinking about. 
more than ever. I've always thought that way, but now I'm, my gosh. Slaves are focused. Yes. No, know? I never thought that I would, that this would be homeschooling and I'd be preparing uh, lunch. And three meals I a would, day. Yes. Three meals a day. And <laughs> I mean, and, and working through Zoom and, and, and. Exactly. Exactly. So that is an amazing moment for a designer to think about the strength of women and, and what women can accomplish. Um, and it's really remarkable. And I know, listen, and the amount of women who are friends and coworkers, who the homeschooling thing, no one it's, is. Oh. <laughs> you have no idea. It uh, starts early. It's a battle. Exactly. Well, <laughs> well, plus also, did you ever think that you'd have to be this techie? No. no. So, so all of those things are weighing on me when I'm thinking about who inspires and, and who we're designing for. I live right in front of your, one of your flagships on Madison Avenue. When, what do you think about the rollout, about opening up? What's the schedule like? Can you say, have you started opening up in other states? We have a few of our lifestyle stores. I think a total of six are open here in uh, North America. Um, and they're just opening now. In most of these instances, uh, it is with limited capacity. And we're realizing more than ever, quite frankly, this is about the relationships, you know, that our sales associates have with their clients. We think that, you know, that is really safety, of course, for all of our employees and our clients, but also relationships. So that's going to be it. And then, of course, we are, we're not doing this. It's, you can't just turn the light switch on. This right. is a slow process, um, and we're following uh, the guidelines uh, and looking at it state by state. And I think we're going to see a lot more one-on-one uh, -on -one shopping experiences that, you know what, you might be in the store privately alone. How great. Calling and making an appointment to yeah. come and visit. Yes. Exactly. By appointment. I think that that's going to be a big thing. And you know what's funny, Nina? Consignment. People, well, that, we do all Already, the time. Yeah, yeah, we do, do it that. all the time. Sometimes people talk about like when they go shopping in a, in a real brick and mortar store, about experiential. And I'm always like, well, wait a minute. If the product is great and you have the right sales associate, that's a fabulous experience. It is. I don't need to have someone tap dancing in a store <laughs> to make me feel that it's experiential. And it's why I keep doing trunk shows and personal appearances. We've started doing uh, appearances on Zoom with clients. And it's, it's been great. It's oh, my great. God. That is fantastic, Michael. Yeah. And, and you know me, I have to connect with people. Yeah, and you do. I've seen you with your customers, and I know what a cr close relationship you have with these women. Oh, so it's, 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 so and it's everything. It's everything. So now, this, yes. is, this is the new interaction. This, and this is the new normal. This is the new normal. And we have to remember... You know what, when, think about it as a fashion person. You know, if you're over 20, you've lived through different decades. And sometimes you're like, can you believe that we wore that? And the reality is fashion changes, life changes. And we all have to accept that we're gonna find the new normal and we're gonna find something that I think is not necessarily bad, it's just different. We have to just remember different. And of course, we'll have nostalgia as we always do. Yes. Um, you know, I, I listen, I was 17 years old at Studio 54. Do I wish I could still go to Studio 54? <laughs> sure. Um, but that was then and this is now. I love your optimism. I love um, that you were able to join us. Thank you. I do have to go and make lunch because I. Thank you. I I have some kids that are going to come running down. Oh, our, cat will start, our cat will start screaming soon. That oh, she'll... I wish that they would have made a cameo. <laughs> Please remind me of the names of your cats. 
We only have one now, unfortunately. No. Yes, only one. But she is, I, I have to tell you, she's the only person in our lives or creature who's thrilled with the idea of this. <laughs> she no. loves it. She's very happy. Very, very happy. You no? Know? So, so I have to think that's like, a, that's a, that's a, a good thing. It is great to see you. My love to Joan, to Lance. Thank you. I'm dying to see you and give you a big hug. I hope that will be soon. Yes. And thank you for being always so optimistic and sharing that optimism with us. Nina, we love you, Michael. Love you, babe. Bye. Bye. Bye.